Hi everyone! As you may recall, in one of the previous videos, I was creating snow particles in a 3D scene. This time, I would focus on a similar effect, but instead, it would be in 2D and it would be rain particles. Well, let's get started. Firstly, I would like to apologize for the slightly longer delay since the last video. When I started this channel, my intention was to release at least one video per week, which I managed to maintain for about six months. However, when you add in the development of my own game and other activities, it was inevitable that the weekly interval would be extended by a few days. Nevertheless, this situation has helped me to demonstrate a simple effect that we added in the fourth chapter of the mentioned game, and that's what I'll be reproducing in this tutorial. Enough talk, let's get into creating rain. In the Godot editor, I have the project of our game Whispers of Prague open, and I decided to add rain to the scene in the alley in front of the bookstore. This one. Yes, I'd like this effect to meet certain criteria, for example, to be able to change its direction, set the density of the rain using the number of active drops, modify the color of the drops, and so on. We can achieve all of this easily using particles. First, we'll add a new node to the scene, so I right click here, root node, add child node, and type particles. Uh, we can see that we can choose between GPU particles 2D or CPU particles 2D. The difference lies in how the respective particles will be processed, either on the graphic card or using the CPU. In the case of such a simple effect, it more or less doesn't make too much difference, as the computation demands will be minimal. Let's try CPU particles 2D. OK, the node is here, and in the editor we can see that in the CPU Particles 2D menu we can choose Convert to GPU Particles 2D for easy conversion if we change our mind later. For now, we don't see anything because the particles are not defined yet. I'll start by adding a texture for the part particle shape. For this purpose, we created a simple vertical line with a gradient towards the edges. And here it is enlarged. You can easily create such an image using a bitmap editor like GIMP, Krita, Photoshop, or you can search for free images using Google. We'll add this PNG file to the texture property in the drawing section. So let me find the uh, Particle texture, it should be uh, here in the particle folder, raindrop, this is it. And as I said, drawing and texture, I will drag it right here. Now we can see that something is happening in the top left corner. Let me enlarge it. Okay. Where each new node is def uh, defaultly placed, including CPU particles 2D. However, we want the raindrops to fall across the entire scene, not just at uh, one point. We'll achieve this by changing the emission shape, which uh, where instead of point, uh, here it is, emission shape instead of point, uh, we will select a rectangle and change its dimensions. Let's try 1000 pixels for the X coordinate. So I will just put it back and type 1000. Okay, that's much better now, but we need to change the position of the node so uh, that the drops don't fall outside the scene. So I will press W or click here for move mode and drag the origin over the center of the top edge of the scene like this. Okay, so we immediately see more issues. The lifespan of the raindrop is too short and it disappears roughly halfway 
uh, down the scene. There should be more drops, we have only 8 of them right now. And we'd like to darken them a bit. Also, since real rain rarely falls exactly perpendicular to the ground, we'd like to tilt it a bit. We'll address all of this with additional parameters. So I'll start with the lifetime, it's right here in the time section. And let's try, for example, two seconds. Okay, that's probably too much, it's falling uh, below the end of the scene, so how about 1.5? Now it looks good. I will increase the number of the particles from 8 to, let's say, 20. Very well. Later on, we'll experiment with much higher values, but for now, this will do. Now, it can be considered a light rain. But the drops are too bright, so we need to change their color. This is done in the color section. Scroll down and here is color. We can either set the same color for all particles or use color ramp. And define a gradient from which shades will be randomly assigned. Let's try the second option. So I will click here to create new gradient, click it. Now we have the gradient here, so let me just do something, some shade of grey, okay, this could be fine and move it very well. Let's work with that. And finally, we'd like to tilt this rain a bit. We'll achieve this by rotating the respective node CPU particles 2D. So I will press E or click here for rotating and drag the mouse for a slight tilt. Okay, it seems that nothing happened. That's because we are using global coordinates, so the rotation won't have any effect. We need to open the drawing section, uh, here it is again, and click here to enable local chords. And now we have terrain nicely tilted. Let's start the scene and observe. Okay, I think it looks good and basically this is the fundamental part of the effect. We will improve it later. Let me get out of the game. Alright, so let's try to enhance our effect by adding some variability. We'll set these parameters. Uh, let me just show everything again and I will start with initial velocity. Uh, so the drops are not falling, all of them uh, at the same pace. Let's do this from 20 to 200, this range. Now the drops are slightly veering to the right, as you can see, uh, which is caused by the default setting of direction. Uh, let me correct that, so it would be here instead of X. We don't want any directions in the X uh, for X coordinate and we want to drop it down. So Y would be uh, 1 and there is no need to do any spread. Let's set it to 0. And to see it better, let's increase the number of particles again, this time to 200. Great. Uh, and we, uh, we will set the minimum scale to 0.5 to create drops of various sizes. It would be right here, down scale from 0.5 to 1. Cool. We need to fine tune the effect so that it covers the entire screen even after tilting. As we can see, nothing is here in this corner and it's uh, to the right more than it should be. So, I will press W again for the move mode and move it and perhaps we want to enlarge our, our emission rectangle a little bit. This is where here, 1000, 1100. Okay, this should be cool. And the very last thing, 
As you may have noticed, the rain is activated at the moment the scene is activated. This means that it first starts falling above the screen and only then it fills it. We can demonstrate this in the game. Let me start again. And now you might have observed that. If not, I will just enter another scene, get outside and we can see it starts at the top and fills the screen. We want to change that, so I will get out of the game. And we can achieve the desired effect by using the preprocess property, which is right here in the time section. So we can set the particles to be in a state as if they had already existed for, let's say, two seconds. All right, let's restart the game and we should see the difference and it is immediately activated. Let me go out uh, inside and outside and we can see the rain is already there. Perfect. Let's get out. Cool, so everything works great and we are done. As a final touch, let's try increasing the number of the particles to much higher values and observe the result. How about 10,000? Now we have a really heavy rain. Let's see how it looks in the game. Okay, and it seems that it is, it needs to be, uh, the lifetime needs to be increased a little bit. Let's get back to 2000. All right, that should be fine. And I will move it a little bit up. Great, start the game. This is nice. And as we can see in the top right corner, the FPS hasn't been reduced so far, which is great. And what if I try 100,000 drops? Let's get out of that and increase yeah, to one more zero. <laughs> and let me start it again. So now it looks more like a waterfall than a rain. If FPS dropped to uh, 60, 61, which is still very decent, but let's not overdo it. Our effect should look at least somewhat realistic. Uh, let me get out of the game, somewhat realistic. By the way, these are still CPU particles. What if we convert them to GPU particles now? All right, so. As I said at the beginning, we need to click here and convert to GPU particles 2D. Now the type has changed to GPU and we can start the game and see that nothing is here. Why is that? Let me explain. Let's exit the game. The problem is in this small blue uh, rectangle, which is... Um, something called the visibility rect. It's in the drawing section, uh, drawing here, and we need to put it to the visible, uh, visible part of the scene, otherwise the particles are not displayed. So I will uh, change these parameters to negative thousand and uh, width, let's make it 2000 so it will cover and the height of course 2000 as well so now it covers covers what we would see in the scene and if I start it again it should be there and it is perfect our GPU particles and the FPS is back to 240 because everything is much faster on the GPU than when it's calculated on the CPU Let's get out. Okay, I think we can uh, try uh, how much it's capable of handling. How about one million particles? Very well. It is more like I don't know, a flood or very, very heavy uh, waterfall. If I start it now. Yeah, 
233 and 1 million particles. Very impressive. Okay, but of course this is not usable in the game. It's just for the effect and how we can use a very high number of particles to create some uh, unique effects if we want to. Thanks for watching. We could further enhance our rain, for example, by including turbulence, changing the color of the drops based on their lifespan, and so on. Anyway, I think this would be enough for a basic demonstration this time. So, have a great day and see you in the next video.